Moment, because here's um, here's Max Rose, who is, you know, I think about as far to the right uh, that you, uh, not that you can get in the uh, Democratic caucus, but he's he is in that, you know, that quartile. It's a right wing Democrat. Yes. right wing Democrat, and. Um, even he was able to sort of like call out the Republican hypocrisy on this. She's a friend. I take her at her word. I know she wants, you know, we share values. She wants us to see a great country. And I look forward to working with her. I do want to go point out to all of you that when Kevin McCarthy said that it was Bloomberg and when it was Soros and it was Steyer pulling the strings behind, behind the scenes, None of you camped out, right? And their caucus stayed united and had his back, and none of you called them out on that. So I, want to, I just want you all to acknowledge that there's some hypocrisy going on there too, okay? That caucus can't be chicken shit in the face of anti-Semitism either. In the face of anti-Semitism, we don't acknowledge party in the face of any hate, any vitriol. We don't acknowledge party, okay? So seriously. You have, you, you, you're not agents of the Republican Party. Have you spoken with... Oh, nice. Staten Island. That was Staten Island. And Staten also, Island. And he, what he said in the beginning, too. And again, I like how we traded, we traded him for the, uh, the guy who said, I'm going to throw you off the balcony to a uh, New York One reporter. It's a nice upgrade there. It's- I hope the rumors I heard about that story are true, which is that Michael Grimm threatened that reporter who's like a nice young man, throw him off the balcony. And, the, and please, all rumors, but the conjecture I've heard is that that nice young man had some relatives that were not as nice as he was that got word to Michael Grimm to not ever do anything like that again. And I really hope that that's true. Oh. But there's Max Rose. I mean, uh, you know, making a good point. Yeah, along those lines, one more thing that people don't realize about the sort of Zionist coalition that exists is that it includes plenty of anti-Semites, right? Like, you can be a Zionist and an anti-Semite. Those two things don't necessarily clash. Like, think about all the the religious right-wing Republicans in this Zionist-Israel-supporting coalition. So, like, yes, um, just because you are anti-Zionist doesn't mean you're an anti-Semite. And it doesn't mean you're not an anti-Semite. Well, look at the dog Zionist whistles right. that Benjamin Netanyahu sends out on that. I mean, he's recently said that he said in a speech, I think a year ago, that it wasn't necessarily Hitler's idea to do the Holocaust, that it came from the Grand Mufti. This is like deep Internet anti-Arab conspiracy nonsense. And of course, the Grand Mufti wasn't a good guy, but that's an incredible move to try to actually in some ways minimize Hitler's role in the frigging Holocaust. And they're buddying Look, up. I'm sorry. It wasn't my idea. I mean, seriously. And they're all buddying up and aligning with historically profoundly anti-Semitic European parties. So, yeah. I mean, not only are you right in a U.S. context, Jamie, literally in Israel, there's bizarre borderline anti-Semitic dog whistling coming from the leadership. Because it's a far right country. It's a far right yeah. white identity he, politics. And here's country. the thing. This goes without saying, but I'm sure they will not be defending Bernie Sanders against any kind of anti Semitic attacks he may face. Yeah, I am course. guessing that that's probably not going to happen. Um, but I will say this you know, it is for, for someone who um, I, I have a um, uh, still, uh, I have a tremendous amount of ambivalence in terms of Israel that is um, increased with uh, my age and with not just a question of my age, but in terms of the direction that, that Israel has taken. But at, at the end of the day, I fundamentally want there to be an Israel that exists. And to the extent that there is a uh, an existential threat to Israel, it is a function of folks like uh, at APAC, the folks who um, who insist on collaborating with them and uh, the right in Israel present the greatest existential threat to Israel there is because there is they're attempting to um, stop people from essentially expressing their conscience <laughs> and that is not going to work forever and when it uh, when that dam breaks when they are no longer able to police, in the way that they're attempting to police now and to silence a ver- perfectly valid and long overdue criticism, uh, there's going to be a debt to pay. This is the way all this stuff happens. 
and it's going to swing hard and quickly. In, and Israel is going to find itself uh, extremely isolated at one point. And I'm very concerned about uh, w- what happens then. So to the extent that there's an existential threat to Israel, it is a function of these people, in my estimation. And this is one more area where Bernie Sanders really is the only option in terms of viable candidates for president. Right now, he's the only one who turned down the invite to speak APAC. And, you know, maybe being Jewish is part of why he's able to do that and play it off well, because, like, what are you going to call Bernie Sanders an anti-Semite? I don't think so. Yes, but- they Oh, will. they will. They absolutely will. They will. But I can I, tell you, I, as someone who has percent will. had uh, 15 years of being called the self-hating Jew. I mean, they can try but it. I'm, I'm but I'm really It's not going to stick that much, yeah, is it? And I don't not think so. But in general, we just would. can't play that game. I mean, I you know, like I, I'm all for like her modifying whatever you know whatever mistakes she might have made. But the bottom line is like anti-Semitism is really clear when you see it mostly, and we're talking about a nation state. And the idea that people in politics can't talk about a nation state is ludicrous and ridiculous in and of itself. And it is absolutely an area, another area where Bernie stands head and shoulders above every other candidate by ironically back to the Friedman clip, just publicly stating support for what is actually official U.S. policy. Right. And still until Trump, that might be slightly formally right. changing. Yeah.